let's talk adolescence. So when your beagle hits adolescence, they are six to 18 months old. This period of time is like your child or my child going from 18 years old to 18 years old. So when you think about that period of time, so the 13 to 18, there are so many developmental periods that will cause you heartache, will cause you to question yourself, will cause you to wonder if your child loves you anymore um, because you are no longer their world. And that's okay. And it's exactly the same with beagles. So you have a 13 year old at six months old and then at 18, uh, sorry, 18 months, you have an 18 month old. Um, 18 months, 18 years. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so if you think about it like that, this is why each month gets a little bit better and a little bit easier. Your 13 year old beagle doesn't want to play with you as much, doesn't want to listen to you as much, doesn't, um, doesn't have any impulse control. So they make decisions, rash decisions. Um, and they're all about their friends. And this is exactly my world at the moment with my 13 year old. She is all about, you know, her social life is all about her friends. I might only get 10 minutes of her time per day and that's okay because I know that as she gets older, that our relationship will change again and it will change so that, um, you know, as, as, as she's getting nearer to the 18 year mark, then we're going to have those cuddles again. We're going to have those talks again. She's going to listen to me. You know, she's going to come to me for guidance and she'll listen. It's exactly the same with our beagles. So don't, you know, don't panic. You know, if when you go for a walk, they're no longer completely focused on you. They're more focused on the other dogs that are around because that's what they want. That's their social life. That's what they need. And so if you can, and um, particularly from about six to 12 months, try and get them that, you know, whether that's through a dog walker, whether that's through daycare, whether that's through um, your neighbor's dogs, your friends and family's dogs, so that they get that social life that they need. Uh, and then as they get older, they will start to focus on you again. And they will start to listen to you again. Their impulsivity will start to come in again. Um, they will not make rash decisions. You know, at the moment, my child is making decisions where they have consequences. And she's learning that. She's learning that this path is good. This path is bad. <laughs> and it's the same with our beagles. They're choosing, they have to have, they have to have the freedom to make the choices so that they can then uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Then they can, you know, learn, you know. So this is why they chase every bird, they track every scent, they, um, they smell every bush because they're learning. They're learning, does this give me a positive? And so what you'll find as your beagle gets older, and I've got this, you know, at the moment I've got a two-year-old beagle and I've got a nearly eight-year-old beagle. This beagle, is still impulsive, is still trying to follow everything. So she has stopped chasing birds. <laughs> she learned quite quickly that birds she couldn't catch. So she probably did that, you know, 10, 20 times when she was in adolescence. Now she doesn't bother, um, unless she really fancies it. Um, but she's learning that actually, you know, chasing a bird doesn't give me a positive. Um, in the beginning, it probably did because it was fun. She was running around, you know, having the time of her life, but now she isn't. So, and then I've got Daisy who knows there's no point tracking that scent. There's no point going after that bird. There's no point smelling that smell because it doesn't give her a positive. So, um, adolescence is a very testing time. Uh, but it is so similar to humans who are going through that teenage phase. They're hormonal. <laughs> Don't I know it? Um, and they will wake up one morning and be bright as a button. And they'll wake up the next morning and be as grumpy as hell. And this is, you know, in both our worlds, beagle and human. Uh, and again, we have to kind of give them a bit of slack, really. They, they are going through a very difficult time in their life. 
um, they don't know why they feel this way. And so sometimes that's why we have to tether them to say, your hyperactivity is off the scales today. Learn to calm down. We may have to put them in their crates to nap because they're so wired and buzzing that they forget that they have to sleep. So we have to put them in their crates to sleep. So, you know, adolescence is, a lot of it is management, okay? So it is about, <laughs> yeah, getting through this time. It's exactly the same with my child. You know, I'm, I'm um, trying to steer her in the right direction. So that's your training with your beagle. Um, but she's constantly doing this, <laughs> which is your beagle. Um, but eventually what will happen is she'll start and your beagles will start to come over to this side. And then that will be when you start to get the rewards from all of that steering, which is your training, um, which is why it can feel so inconsistent. You know, one day they'll sit beautifully for their dinner, the next they're barking their head off. And you think, well, crap, this training isn't working. It is working. When you get a positive out of training, even if it's just once and you don't see that positivity for another six days, that's okay. Because the fact that they can do it tells me that they're choosing not to do it the rest of the time. And that on a given day when they're feeling good, they will choose it again. And then they'll choose it again and again and again. But in between, you have all of this chaos, this inconsistency. And that is just part of adolescence. It's it's just part of what it is. So keep going, keep doing your training, even if you feel like you're telling your beagle to get off the table four million times, which is exactly what I had to do with Pepper. And now she rarely gets on the table. She still does, <laughs> but she rarely gets on it. And then when I tell her to get off, she gets off. Um, in the beginning, I had to physically move her off, 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 off. I felt like I was doing it 4,000 times a day. Um, but she had to be shown what I needed her to do. It's not enough to tell them. They're not dogs that you tell them what to do and they do it. That's not what they're genetically programmed to do. Labradors, Spaniels, yes. Beagles, no. So they have to be shown what you want to do. So you have to get up, you know. You can, you know, it's a bit of exercise. You might lose a bit of weight, that kind of thing. That's how I see it. You have to get up, 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 you have to get up to pull them down, to pull them down, to pull them down. Um, so yeah, uh, keep going. If you have anything that you think you can't manage and you're really struggling with, nipping, toileting, separation anxiety, resource guarding, what else, lead reactivity, uh, lead pulling, recall, just please contact me. You know, I have worked with Beagles solidly now for over four years and I have been able to perfect the training over those four years from the feedback I get from my clients. And so now I know what does work and, and it works quickly because dog training, the normal dog training is geared around dogs that are people pleasers, listen and want to recall. <laughs> it does don't. So we have to have a different way of dealing with it and we have to get into their heads, which is why it can be quite difficult at times, okay? So please contact me. There's a link in the comments below and it has a link to my diary. If you are outside the UK, you just need to convert the times. So go to Google and put GMT to your uh, time zone and it will tell you how many hours difference behind or in front. And then you just consider that when you book your time with me. So for example, EST is five hours behind, so a four o'clock in my diary would be 11 a.m. EST time. Hope that helps. <laughs> um, have a wonderful day. I am beagleless at the moment, they're dog walking. Um, and so that means I can get on top of some of your posts um, and also go through the competition with that brilliant photo um, of the beagle. Also my podcast, so I'm going to go through those who commented on wanting to be a guest speaker. There's still time, there's a post about it. If you want to be a guest speaker on my podcast, just go and put your information on the post and I'll contact you. Um, have a lovely day uh, and I'll see you later. Bye.